is our third video of After the End Fan Fork. I took a week off because I'm in college and I can only really record on the weekend. Uh, and today we are looking at the Great Lakes area. And I will, will, I promise this time we'll actually look at cultures. But we're going to be looking at the religions and, I guess, states that make up the Great Lakes. Mostly around this area. Most of the stuff up here is just, I guess, Vikings and Native Canadians. Yeah, but, but we'll look into it, we'll look into it, so I'll make a pause now, and I'll see you guys on the map. Okay, we are the Duke of DeSalle, which is Chicagoland. Chicago is a metropolis, and it is, as of 2666, owned by a character of the Conclavian Faith, which I'll read the description of now, and funnily enough, I just clicked on the Pope in St. Louis, but Conclavian. After the deluge, the surviving Catholic hierarchy in America was given a miraculous sign at the Council of Chicago that confirmed the destruction of the papacy in Rome, giving the surviving American cardinals the right to hold a papal enclave and elect a new bishop of Rome. The new American popes lacked a permanent temporal seat for over a century, a period known as the Wandering Papacy, until a control over the city of St. Louis from Missouri was finally acquired in the 23rd century. Uh, with this newfound authority came a gradual solidification of power, many independent churches converting to the Conclavian sect to avoid political domination by other Christian authorities, their traditions being observed, absorbed in the process. Uh, you can see they have monasticism, communion and armed pilgrimages, let's see, other faiths in the category. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them, I'll probably make a separate video where I go over all of these different, like, uh, Christian aligned face well you could see Conclavian I think it's the largest of them all with uh, Evangelical coming in close second but now let's look at their main rival in the Great Lakes region well there are two great rivals Vikings and Galvanists but you can already probably guess what Vikings are but Galvanists they're they're really cool so I also just a reminder to myself we are gonna we're gonna look at all the religions and then we'll look at the cultures as you can see like Chicago and Hosier, Gateway and Riverlander, Ohioan, uh, Steel Folk, Motowner, Dairylander, Youper, Ontarian, Sixer, Ojibwe. But let's get back to uh, the Galvanist, Prometheans, and we'll look at like the traditionalists and then the Vikings. And then we'll, we could read real rotors, <laughs> a little treat. But the Galvanizing Assembly, an assembly of priests tasked with restoring the ancient industrial forces, the Galvanizing Assembly ask, acts as a supernatural, super, supernatural authority to the vast majority of the laborious realms, protecting the populace from returning to the tyranny of the false titan kings. The Assembly are the keepers of a vast and complex legal code, Codex to aid in the reconstruction of industry, emulation and reverence of the titans, those who have contributed so much to the industrial forces they rem that they remain immortalized in its very fabric, are the very uh, are the paramount source of the assembly's laws, and within the populace their worship permeates all aspects of society, and they are in an industrious faith. But let me read the Salvinger. Uh, the secrets of the old world will be revealed to us if we examine the work of the ancients. All of us must do part to discover these sacred artifacts. And like in the Crusader Kings 2 version, you can go on scalvaging uh, expeditions. And I should also point out, their head of faith, look at that. That's the international workers of the world, like uh, Beacon, so, not Beacon, uh, Sigil. So that's pretty cool. But then we have Promethean cults. They're one of the industrious faiths, but let me, I'll read this. It said that in a time long ago, there was only one thing that separated man from beast. The ability to cooperate. From uh, the cooperation sprang the force of industry and a metaphysical incarnation of all the achievements of mankind, cultural, technological, and legal. It assisted in man in creating a society incomprehensibly utopian to anyone before or since. But since uh, this came hubris, over-reliance, stagnation, eventually rust, a force of decay that ate away at both man's constructions on earth and divine industry itself, the rusting had reduced mankind to the barbarity of old, with the faithful seek to recreate mankind's ancient achievements, giving new life into the forces of industry and creating a new utopia. 
And I think the Prometheans, let me read the description before I give my opinion. For the chaos of the rusting came the Titan King cults, otherwise known as Promethean cults. These divine rulers believed uh, that every realm had their own personal forces of industry, and that it was their responsibility of the Titan King to act as ward for their own nation's forces. As time passed, however, the galvanizing assembly supplanted their spiritual authority, and the Prometheans... Uh, nearly disappeared. Those remaining faithful hold on, believing that it will take a truly noble titan king to bring back order and industry to a wayward world. Uh, so, I, I hope you guys get, like, the reference, like, these guys are unionists, well, Prometheans are worshipping the All-Americas, which are, like, the major, like, mega-corporations. So I just think it's funny, but then we also got the Tribunal for the Study of Enigmas. Uh, and this is a Latin American industrial faith. <laughs> yeah, they're in Mexico. That's pretty cool. But um, and Enigmatos believe that before the Grand Apagon, uh, mankind was ruled by a small elite of cien scientificos who learned through ingenuity the ancient enigmas of the world that granted them um, immense power, the ability to create a subservient race of golems that made mankind's le lives easier much longer. After the Grand Apagon, Ingenuity was severely weakened, knowledge of the enigmas was lost, and the golems quickly died off. Yet a few scientificos still remain and scour the land in search of precious enigmas to hoard in the hope that once knowledge is reclaimed, ingenuity is restored, and Potter is returned. Uh, and then we have the school sustainment. Um, in sharp contrast to the rest of the industrial, industrial sex, the school sustained glory believes the forces the industry to be more enigmas to... Uh, parasites, a horrible construction who fed off both nature and the souls of men under the guise of assisting in the glorious work until they wither away and rusted. They now seek to recreate the wonders of the world without feeding the industrial forces that caused its destruction. In order to do this, they study extensively from the people known as the masters. People knew the, of the danger of giving in to the lives of industry, yet were unfortunately disregarded in their time, and they have united in labor. Those who toil in the same profession are brothers and sisters in labors. Uh, in labor, this relationship should serve as the foundation for communities and faith. So I think these guys might be like, uh, like industrial workers of the world. But then we have the Innovatus and walking metamorph metamorphosis. The living titan is their, their head of faith. Uh, by, uh, the lifeblood of industry never rested upon the whims of kings or councils, but by the spirit of ambitious individuals, fueled by the great compulsion to change the world that few can match. At least that is what the Innovatorist movement attests. The idea that one is born with titanhood rather than achieving it runs counter to Promethean and Galvanist thought, but has allowed many charismatic leaders to challenge the authority of these old institutions. And then, liberty or death, auspicious birthright, and then walking metamorphosis. Remaining the same way as fundamentally inhuman, true believers should change their focuses and views with frequency. It is thus better to always change them to have a permanent opinion about everything. Okay, that's a little little boring, honestly. I thought that it was going to be like like cyber cult. Uh, there was something like that in the Crusader Kings 2 version, or am I like, uh, miss, like, attributed it, but nevertheless, let's get on to Viking and they are the only group in the Norse faith. Uh, stemming from the far north are the practices of the Northmen, in particular the Viking faith of the Norse people with a claim on broken lineage, with a claimed unbroken lineage descending from old gods to new, and from the pre-event world to a post-Ragnarok one. The North Norse faithful for long a flourish in the frigid north and are on the waterways of the Great Lakes in old America. But the Vikings believe that in the time of old, uh, time of the old gods has come again. According to the Vikings, most of humanity perished in the darkness of Ragnarok, along with the false gods of ancient America and many of the old gods, including Odin and Thor. Thor sacrificed him to protect the last of humanity, but in the middle of miracles he rose from the dead, ending Ragnarok. Thor now leads the surviving gods in the post-Ragnarok age. However, the dead gods are not truly gone. The restless spirits uh, sometimes return to roam the earth. Alongside man, the followers of the Thunderer will be protected from the dead god, just as they were protected during Ragnarok. And let's see, their special attendant, they don't have one. But their warmonger, they practice human sacrifice and ancestor worship. And their holy sites, a lot of the religions have Chicago. That's, I might have said this at the start of my video, but Chicago is like the Jerusalem stand in this world. Like, 
it is a very, very, very important city. In fact, it's probably even more valuable than Jerusalem itself because it sits at the like the mouth of the Mississippi and feeds right into the Great Lakes, a massive, massive area of trade. So let's look at real rotors and then let's finally get into the into the cultures. I know I forgot it last time. Real Road lies at the heart of the traditional trail walker lands in the, in the great prairies and mountains in the American West. They take their name from the Great Iron Trail that once drove across it, uniting the lands from the silver to the golden great golden gate. It's such a little paragraph and I messed it up, but blessings from the barons. These unforgiving landscapes are honed divine secrets re reserved for those wise enough to pay them for their deserved reverence. And it uh, reduces attrition, which is pretty fucking excellent. But now, let's look at culture. We got Chicago and their culinary artists, uh, industrious cosmopolitan elitism, iron tongue, let's see, uh, iron tongue, uh, plain speak, shore speak, shore speak, shore speak, iron tongue, let's see, uh, back country, back country. We'll, I'll probably make a separate video talk about Appalachia because they're really, really cool. Especially, um, like the the, the new uh, revelationist face. They are very, very cool. But I'll save that for a future video. But let's look some more into the cultures. Hosier, sacred hunts, warrior culture, performative honor. Uh, let's also look at the innovations. So there's the rusted age. Uh. Uh, then we have, oh yeah, Reserve Forces, The Draft. Now, The Silver Age, Suburb, Horseshoes, Special Forces, Sheriffs, Executive Privilege, and Closed Helmets. And uh, you get the picket line. Oh, that that's another cool thing that I remember. Picket lines is like the unions, like, striking. Haciendas, Coinage, Wills and Testament. Then the Gilded Age, uh... Let's see, unions, which I think are the, like, the, like, standard for guilds, the guild invention. Then we have, uh, the Golden Age, National Armory, Corps of Engineers, um, let's see, Antediluvian Thought, Designer Clothing, Civic Duty, Probate Succession, Conditatory, and it's, uh, Conditatory, I mean, they have a special, uh, description, being, being both wealthy and centrally located, the River Platte Basin has become a major center for mercenary companies that traveled in when not an active campaign. Since they were already here, we should not be able to negotiate a better rate for them than they would normally charge. Because in the in like with like a bunch, bunch, bunch more years of like medieval development along the Mississippi River, this area would be very, very populated, very developed. A lot of like rivers. This is like um. If you are in a mercenary company, this is where you'll be fighting. Either here, the south, or like Mexico, or California, because there's a lot of little like princes, princedoms and duchies are going to be like killing each other. Um, now let's look at uh, steel, uh, steel folk. It's upside down because the map's supposed to be oriented this way, but I got it so I could change it like this. You just go to the settings, but eye for an eye, sorceress, metalry. Industrious. Now it's like a Motowner. Maritime mercantilism. They find iron tongue language. Let's see. Um, do these guys? Michiganders. They yeah. They shore speak. So it's iron tongue and shore speak. Um, but you you could see there's some little like uh. Let me see if I recognize any characters. Up north. Oh yeah. They they were they were a bitch to fight. Like when I was playing as Russ Coltis and after the end like uh, Van Fork. It'd always just be the Jarl up north would just be a stubborn, stubborn, like, very hard character to dislodge from the north. Then, uh, Detroit, in this version, it's a city-state. It's like, uh, it's led by Coleman, but I think it was a republic led by, I think, Coleman, uh, but he was, like, Coleman the Liberator or something. I don't remember that well. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, then we have, uh, Mehmet Soliman. Okay, that's pretty funny. That's a reference to the Ottomans. And they follow traditionalism. Well, I'll probably make a video in the future about Islam. Uh, probably when I talk about, like, the... Maybe the South. What is Baha'i doing here? Okay, that's pretty funny, but... 
Let me let me read it. Let me read it. I gotta stop distracting myself. I I guess you can form an Ohio and Ottoman Empire. Um. Okay. Uh, the traditional community descends from pre-event Muslims, both Shiites and Sunni, banding together and setting aside minor differences to survive the trauma of the event. Together, traditionalists focus inward, seeking to preserve their tradition. And beliefs did not forget uh, where they came from, while the world changes around them. And he is a steel folk. Oh yeah, Alleghenia. I remember these guys. They're, it's cool just to see like new characters and then people like I recognize, like uh, Ellis Krakoon of Tennessee. I think uh, in the Crusader Kings 2 version, he just had like the duchy of Middle Tennessee, but he's now the king of Tennessee. Pretty cool. Uh, well, let's look at some more cultures. Like we have Gateway and backcountry language, but more like uh, the Catholics. Who settled along the Mississippi compared to like the Appalachian backlanders, um, tribal unity, eight mountain ruralism, ancient miners, resourceful tinkerers. Then we have like the Ozarks, more backcountry, heartlanders, plain speak, which I think is there, uh, like oh, oh, Iowa, and then the seven council fires. Again, I'm probably gonna make a video on the Native Americans. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna do a lot of, lot of these type of videos, especially, um, yeah, on the 21st, so in about 11 days from now, I'm going back home, just for winter break, and I'll be, I'll be home for like, uh, like a month, more than a month, I think, so I'm gonna be recording a lot more, but, anyway, I'm Nick D4VIS, I'll see you guys next time.